The stone of complacency. Do you recognize it in your own life? The dictionary defines complacency as a feeling of quiet pleasure or security, often while unaware of some potential danger, defect, or the like. It's a smug self-satisfaction with an existing condition. Now, some similar words might be indifferent or calloused. To be indifferent is to lack interest or concern. It means it's unimportant or little or no concern or mediocre, neither good nor bad in character or quality. Nothing special, it's just average or routine. Or maybe the word apathy. Apathy is that absence or suppression of passion, emotion, or excitement. Can I just say that complacency is a deadly foe for all spiritual growth? And it's a stone that many of us are tripping over. What do complacent Christ followers look like? Ones who have allowed their faith to stagnate, right? They're, instead of growing, they're spiritually motionless. They're standing still. They hear the word, but they don't put it into practice. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, we read in verse 15 and 16, I know your deeds, that you are neither hot or cold. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. I think that term lukewarm describes a complacent life. It's considered spiritually useless. And the word of God seems really clear. A lukewarm faith, lukewarm love, it's vomit in the mouth of God. He has no taste for it. In the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom, chapter one, verse 32 says, fools are destroyed by their own complacency. The reality is any of us can allow our faith to stagnate, right? It's easy to allow complacency to creep into our spiritual life. We can become too comfortable. And in a sense, we recognize or believe that we have arrived. Or maybe it's like that old quote, some people are born on third base and they go through life thinking they hit a triple. You see, some people seem to feel as though, again, they have it all made. They've learned the whole truth. There's nothing you can tell them. They already have it all learned. They think of themselves, again, as arrived. And since we've arrived, you know, there's no further need to go or to grow or to serve. And then that pride of complacency begins to appear. I hope you recognize there's a cost to following Christ. It's a high price, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. So we got to continue to pursue becoming Christ-like. Pursue Him, His ways. Let's go for it. That means we got to deny self. we got to carry the cross. we got to get after His purpose. And yes, this means self-sacrifice. And complacency, that leads to the other extreme, lukewarm state. I'm saved. I'm filled with God's Spirit. I go to church. I, I read God's Word periodically. I pray some. I serve occasionally. Again, I'm just saying we're foolish to think that we can stay the same, that we can coast, that we can just say we've arrived and still please Jesus who gave us all. So complacency, it trips most of us up at some point because it seems so comfortable and convenient. It seems right and it might even feel good. But I'm telling you, the good is often a distraction that leads us away from the very best for Jesus. So let's fully rely on, trust in, and serve Jesus with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and with all our mind. Reject complacency. Live by a holy desire and a fervent passion to seek Jesus first. Have a great day, a great rest of the week.